Do you feel more like a bouncing cork more than a graceful mermaid underwater? Struggling to stay horizontal while scuba diving? You're in the right place. Today, I'm going to show the tricks I've picked up from diving around the world over the past 10 years on how you can spot if you're incorrectly weighted and what you can do about achieving the perfect weighting. And then we will take it a step further and I'll show you how to refine your diving posture to ensure your safety operating with good air efficiency and looking as professional as can be. It's time to transform from a clumsy seahorse to a sleek dolphin underwater. Before we get into the nitty gritty of fixing your weighting issues, you must understand the signs of incorrect weighting before you struggle or hurt yourself on your dives. Beginners often get overweighted by dive masters with the better down than up mentality. However, Overweighting is like wearing a sumo suit to a ballet class. You'll get the job done, but it won't be pretty. This is why it's so important to learn to properly weight yourself so you can start to develop other diving skills. Overweighting forces you to rely heavily on your BCD, making buoyancy control trickier than using your lungs for direct control. If your BCD is working overtime like a hyperactive balloon, constantly inflating to keep you afloat, you're carrying way too much weight. But if you're too light, as you use the air in your tank, you'll find the tables have turned and you'll be swimming downward on your safety stop to avoid popping to the surface. Imagine you're a cork bobbing at your safety stop, unable to stay put, and that's a clear sign you're too light. The perfect balance is the right amount of weight. You can hit neutral buoyancy easily with one to two quick puffs of air in your BCD at your planned dive depth. You should also have sufficient weight to peacefully relax during the safety stop at the end of the dive. Furthermore, where the weight is distributed on your body will change your ability to hold good trim. Good trim is defined as the angle of alignment for cutting through the water in motion often aiming for a comfortable neutral trim which is flat and horizontal. If weight is not evenly distributed across your body, you'll find it nearly impossible to hold neutral trim any length of time. If you try to hit neutral trim and just hold, what starts naturally to take you out of the position? If your legs drop, it means you're bottom heavy, while if your upper torso drops, your top heavy. Different gear may mess up your adjustments, so this is something you'll always be tinkering with throughout your diving career. Inability to reach Nuzo trim after some dives is a clear sign of incorrect weighting. These signs are like underwater traffic lights guiding you towards that perfect buoyancy. Keep a keen eye out for these clues on your next dive. They're your compass pointing towards the right weight. According to a survey by Divers Alert Network, improper weighting contributes to 30% of diving accidents. Remember, recognizing these signs is half the battle won in achieving that weightless underwater feeling. Now that we've identified the red flags, let's explore the critical piece of finding your Goldilocks zone and that perfect weight for your body and gear. Your journey to ideal weighting begins at the surface with a simple yet crucial weight check. This pre-dive check is essential, especially when you get new gear or return to diving after some period of time. Enter the water with your BCD fully inflated, and when you're ready, start to test. Let all the air out of your BCD. Picture yourself as a human buoy. With a full breath, you should float with your eyes just above the waterline. It's an approximation, but if you sink further than your head, you're likely overweighted and can't keep yourself buoyant with your lungs alone. As you exhale, envision yourself as a slowly sinking treasure, gently descending beneath the waves. But wait, there's more to this equation than just your body. Your gear plays a starring role too. Think of your wet or dry suit as a built-in life jacket. The thicker it is or what it's made of could mean as more positively buoyant 
and needs weight to counteract it and allow you to sink. Diving in tropical waters with a thin suit or going bare skinned, you'll need less weight, like a bird shedding feathers for flight. At the end of your dive, when you stop at your safety stop with around 500 psi left in the tank, you should be able to hold neutral trim for the duration and be comfortable. If you're becoming positively buoyant during the safety stop and can't stay down, you need to add weight. The key is to find that sweet spot where you and your gear are in perfect harmony. Armed with this knowledge, it's time to master the fine art of fine-tuning your weights, a skill that separates good divers from the great ones. Admittedly, it took a really long time for me to understand the value of good neutral trim. My airtime was great and I had good buoyancy to avoid others and enjoy dives while respecting everything around me. Neutral trim, however, is much more necessary for cold water or tech diving due to the nature of how dry suits work. It's the next level for many divers and will take a long time to master and achieve that strong neutral trim. In the end, achieving perfect buoyancy with neutral trim will help you look more professional, extend your dives, and open the door for more advanced diving like cave or tech diving. Now let's dive into that finer mastery of waiting, which will require repeated dives and practice as you figure out how and where to move the weights between the dives. For most divers, especially in warm water, they'll be bottom heavy with their legs dropping. The trick to combating this is moving more weight up your body towards your shoulders. You can adjust the tank behind your BC to be strapped in higher up while still leaving room for your head to look forward. So the trim pockets can be found on the back and this is ideally where you want most of your weight. If you're wearing a weight belt, moving weight onto the tank strap could help substantially. Some BCDs have trim pockets near the tank as well that will be helpful. You can also potentially strap weights to the front area here, the belt. So this is something that goes around your waist. This is a nice belt because you get options and you can perfect your trim as you need it. So you can put it on the sides, you can put it where the tank's not gonna go. You generally will want different weights because trim is like one of those things. It's the end game, getting good trim. It takes a while, it takes a lot of practice and you'll just be constantly reconfiguring your weight. You can have one pounders and two pounders. These can go in any pocket and do pretty well. These things are really awesome. We love these things because they are comfortable as well. But sometimes you want something that can strap on to different straps and there's different holders for these things. These things are much more sturdy. Uh, they won't fail you. It's just a piece of iron. Uh, they generally will have some kind of plastic on them to help them last longer. Saltiness C will rust metal. And so this helps protect them. And they have a different kind of sizes to these things. They're not as comfortable as the other one, but they have options. As long as there's a strap, I can strap this thing somewhere. So with that said, I also want to talk about the concept of detachable weight as weight on the tank and BCD are not easily reachable in an emergency. These, which sit on the belt, and you'll see the straps are on the bottom, and sometimes they have integrated weights, and you just pull them out and you drop your weight. I've seen some really crappy BCDs where they detach a little too easily and people just lose weights without meaning to. But in this case, if you need detachable weight, you would put your heavy weights here in emergency. You can drop your weight in this pocket, unbuckle that and it, the weight will drop. You usually want some portion of your weights, at least 25 to 33% to be detachable, allowing you to create an emergency ascent with a good amount of positive buoyancy in a few crucial moments. Detachable weights are there only for extreme emergencies, but are available if and when you need them, especially if you run into a situation where you lose consciousness, and that's hard to predict for anyone. For cold water diving, where there are a variety of thick wetsuits, neoprene dry suits, and tri-laminate, you'll need to compensate for varying materials 
that will require more weight. This is the back plate and the wing. So you have this guy, you have the big plate here. This thing weighs quite a bit and it replaces some of your weights. So you don't need like a weight belt, but it's all gonna be centered on your back with the tank. In addition, you have this thing here that adds a bunch of extra weight. This is generally for cold water diving. You need more weight because you need a lot of stuff to keep you warm. So this is really much more necessary for cold water diving to keep you down. Warm water, you don't need this much weight. Sometimes you need hardly anything at all. You have to manage your weight much more in cold water or even tech diving because you're going deep enough that cold water is gonna be a very realistic thing. Often we'll be able to put weights on these straps here. So if you need to have something to help with bottom heaviness, you would generally prefer this top strap. And if you need something with kind of like just having something in mid-weight torso on your back, you could put it on the bottom strap as well. And you can see here, you can either put them on the straps directly, or you can also have these little pouches and these help quite a bit. Because of the need for more weight, you could now be suffering from top heavy symptoms. The diver's down, the top and the fins are up, and the need to figure out how to move that weight down. Some divers use ankle weights, but I don't personally recommend them. I'd first explore using a weight belt to move the weight to your hips and consider using negative buoyant fins like the jet fin. Now these things are built like a tank. I feel this is a lifetime investment because I feel these things can almost survive a nuclear explosion. These things are really tough and they're extremely negatively buoyant. So they weigh quite a bit. And if you're having floaty legs, you can keep them down. These can help solve that problem. This comes much bigger problem, of course, in cold water. Tropical waters, warm waters, these do quite well. Of course, these particular ones don't do frog finning very well, but these are great fin. But they're positively buoyant. If you are bottom heavy, it could help solve that. But if you're top heavy, this could actually exasperate the problem in which you probably want the jet fin instead. Don't forget that factors like water salinity altitude, and even your physical fitness can significantly affect your buoyancy needs. Stay adaptable and always be willing to reassess your weights as conditions change. Consider keeping a dive log that includes your weight details for different conditions and where you put your weight. It's like creating a personal buoyancy blueprint and it's helped me save time in many different dives. Whenever I hit a certain condition, I can just look up the last time I dived that condition. At least that's a baseline that's roughly in the area that I'm looking for. With time and practice, you'll develop an almost intuitive sense of how much weight you need for any dive scenario. But this is only a piece of the ultimate puzzle of buoyancy control, for which I have a perfect video for you to watch next. Check it out and until next time.